Hi, this is Laura and Travia. So, how do we know which stops to choose when? We talked about the choruses that each division features, and that's definitely a good place to start. But we certainly aren't limited to that. We can combine instruments across various choruses, and we can play on two different manuals with each hand plus the pedals. We can even couple entire divisions together by way of MIDI routing to have an even bigger mix of timbres on a single keyboard, which is also a common feature on real organs. The possibilities are truly endless, but the good news is that organ sheet music often does provide basic indications for which stops to consider. So let's try an example. You can see that in the first few measures, we have an indication to use an 8-foot string on the great division, a soft 16-foot on the pedal, and an oboe stop on the swell. So how would we handle this in Fredonia? Because we clearly do not have all of these options available to us, at least in these terms. This is very common with organ sheet music. It will often refer to stops that your instrument may or may not have, so you have to get creative. So let's get creative. Eight foot string on the grate. We do not have a string chorus on this grate, but strings are generally softer and more muted. So let's start with the Spitzflute, which is a string flute hybrid, to be fair. I'm getting the feeling from just looking at this that this is supposed to be a soft sort of meditative piece. So I think that's a good place to start. We also have a soft stop for the pedal. Now soft is not an actual stop name, that's really just a descriptor. So this is really left up to our imagination. And the soft stops, as we know, are gonna be the sub bass probably. Oh, I'm still on the, uh, still on the grate. There we go. Now we got the pedal. And that's probably all we wanna do there. We might wanna brighten it up with another stop, but it's just referring to a 16 foot, so let's leave it for now. Swell on the oboe. This one is tricky because we don't have any reeds on the swell that sound like an oboe. They are all pretty brassy. The trumpet would be far too aggressive for this peaceful marking that we have at the top here. So we're gonna have to pick something else. We could hop over to the positive and use the crumb horn, which is very oboe-like. Something between an oboe and a clarinet. However, if we're playing on the positive, we will lose our expression. That's that special pedal slash slider that's particular to the swell that gives us control over the volume and gives it more dynamism. So if we play this solo line intended for an oboe on the positive, we will lose our expression pedal. So I don't know that that's the best option either because we do have expression markings here that we'll have to observe. My best guess here is to go with the viola. It's not necessarily the most oboe-like sound, but it, there is something reedy in its quality and I think it will blend better with the other stops that we have selected than any of the other options here, except maybe the celeste, let's give it a whirl. I think we want the brighter viola sound here. That's more oboe-y to me. So now that we have all of these put together, you can see here that I already have the MIDI programmed. So I can already hear in this example that our viola is a little bit on the soft side. If I were programming this again, I might want to add a chillest there to thicken it up a little bit because even when I was activating the swell pedal, it didn't quite reach a high enough volume for me to feel truly soloistic. So there's still some work that we can do here, but you can see how you start with getting creative. Each organ is different, has its own unique set of ranks, and you'll hardly ever see sheet music that works exactly with your instrument's stops, but there's always a way to work around it. What do you do if you don't have sheet music and aren't sure how to start mixing sounds on your own? There are some general broad rules we can look to. The first is to consider the pipe type. There are two kinds of basic pipes on an organ, the flue pipe, not flute, but flue, and the aforementioned reed pipe. 
The flue, which is the most common, roughly 80% of the pipes on the organ, is built like a whistle where the wind passes up through the tube and exits at the mouth near the top. Flue pipes include many of the choruses we talked about, the principal chorus, the flute chorus, the string chorus. The reed pipes, which are roughly 20% of the pipes on the instrument, produces the sound in the boot or the bottom of the pipe. Picture an upside-down clarinet, the wind is passing through the pipe or the mouthpiece that causes a metal tongue or reed to vibrate against a brass shallot, and that buzzing is amplified by the pipe itself. Most solo stops are reed pipes, your trumpet, your pozon, your crumb horn, your chalme, and so on. Reed-based instruments in any instrumental setting often dominate the texture. I find the most helpful analogy is an oboe in an orchestra. The oboe by itself is by no means the loudest instrument, but you can pair it with literally any combination of instruments, and that unique timbre of the oboe will undoubtedly color the sound in a big way. It has a particular frequency array that cuts through the ensemble, and this is true of the reed stops on an organ. One reed can obliterate an entire chorus of flue pipes, so you want to use the reeds sparingly to make the best use of their unique colors, you also want to consider the range. Certain pipes in the same register can be combined to great effect, while others might create a strident or even out of tune sound. In general, the higher you go, the more unstable the combinations become. So I'm gonna move to this MIDI channel here where I have all of the divisions routed so that we can hear this really stacking up over time. So in general, piling up eight foot pipes to thicken the sound. Generally works out pretty well, even with a limited number of reeds. Although you can hear that even one, even one has a lot of power. But piling up all these eight foot pipes generally has just the effect of increasing the volume rather than drastically changing the timbre or the tuning. Piling up four foot pipes can depend. These are two flutes. That's an octave. That's another flute. Sounds a little bit louder. I'm getting really tricky here. Now I've activated the swell unison, but I'm only using the four foot coupler to give myself even more four foot pipes. So, so far so good. But there is a limit to how much you can do this without it overpowering the lower end of the instrument. Let's say you have a bunch of eight foot pipes and you want that to be sort of the basis of the melody. If you pile up an equal number of four foot pipes on top of that. Now the four foot pipes are overpowering the eight foot pipe. So you're losing the unison pitch, the fundamental of where you wanted your melody to sound, and the four foot pipes are becoming less coloring notes and more their own fundamental pitch. So four foot pipes, you always wanna think about a ratio to the eight foot pipe, which is sort of your baseline. Piling up two foot pipes, always risky. That's already getting a little strident for me, especially against a couple of eight foot or even a four foot pipe. That two foot pipe is really starting to overpower there. And in particular, you cannot mix these two foot pipes with the mutation and mix stops. It starts getting really weird. I should rephrase. It's not that you can't, but you can already hear. It's really strident and abrasive and will definitely overpower all of the other pipes you may have connected there. So piling up two foot pipes gets dicey because the tuning can get a little odd, especially, especially with these mixture mutation stops. So in general, I find it's helpful to think of the upper pipes above the eight foot as frequencies or harmonics of those pipes, which is mathematically true because they're all dividing equally into each other. You don't want the upper harmonics to dominate the fundamental of the pitch. If we have four eight foot pipes, maybe you want two four foot pipes. The eight foot pipe is still dominant there. Maybe you want a two foot pipe. There you go, it's a little better. If you have only two eight foot pipes, maybe you just want one four foot and maybe a softer two foot. If you have a bazillion eight foot pipes, let's say you've got like five or six going on here, 
Then you could probably get up to three four foot pipes without it having a problem with the balance. A two foot pipe, and then probably you can add in your mixture. Maybe add another two foot. You can hear that there's differences in the balance between the different pitches. That's the sort of thing that you want to consider as you're working on your registration. If you find that you're losing your melody line, you might want to look at how many upper pipes you have versus lower pipes. Another good trick with mixture and mutation pipes, if you're trying to figure out if that timbre would fit well with the chorus that you have selected or the combination of stops, a good way to determine this is to play in the lowest register of the instrument. In that register, any tuning or timbral issues becomes like way more obvious. You can kind of hear it there, so. It's not bad, but you can hear how much the Nazard's harmonic note, it's tuning, is cutting through there in the lower part of the register. So it doesn't sound terrible to me by any means, but you might notice that the more you pile up these mixture and mutation stops, the more the tuning starts to get a little bit odd and you hear a lot of harmonics that you don't necessarily want. Lastly, more pipes equals less clarity. For fast passages involving intricate lines, it will generally sound the best and most clear with less pipes. It just has more buoyancy and more flexibility, as we'll see in this final example. You will have noticed that many of my examples are related to my experience playing in houses of worship, and you may want to employ the organ in a different setting than a traditional hymn or chorale. If you're looking for more examples outside of the sacred music medium, a good place to start is with film soundtracks that prominently featured the organ, Interstellar immediately comes to mind, as well as classical concert masses, which also occasionally employ organ in an orchestral setting. However you find yourself including organ in your work, the basic rules apply every time. Being sensitive to the harmonic series, or how many higher pipes you stack up versus the lower pipes. Being mindful of how the pipes blend with other instruments and itself. For example, having a solo reed competing with an oboe in the orchestra is not a great idea, just as it wouldn't be a great idea to have two solo reed stops engaged at the same time competing with each other. And being mindful of the volume of the instrument. The swell has a certain degree of volume control because of its expression pedal, but the other divisions do not. So adding a stop means adding volume, no matter which stop it is. And an organ really can obliterate an entire orchestra if you do, as the kids say, pull out all the stops. So I hope you enjoy this final audio example, the Allegro Maestoso from Handel's Water Music. This piece is a real favorite at weddings because it really shows off what an organ can do. You'll see in this example, I actually have two separate instances of Fredonia open. I have my loud registration for the first half of the piece and a much softer registration for the middle section. And I will keep the sheet music visible as it plays so you can see how I worked with the directions in the sheet music and was able to get creative to work around the stops that I don't have available to me. Thank you so much for watching, and have fun playing!